hey there, a lot of people have been talking about hyperinflation and Twitter's CEO, Jack Dorsey, has uh, has been really talking about hyperinflation. He started on Saturday night. He did a tweet late Saturday night talking all about hyperinflation and how it's going to change everything. Hyperinflation is going to change everything. It is happening. And I think what's very, very, very important is that is really going to move crypto. Now, Jack Dorsey leads two companies. He leads one that's very successful and understands money. It's called Square. If you ever bought something with your, uh, with your iPhone, with Apple Pay, or with a credit card attached to someone's phone, I don't have one anymore, but they have these little Square Square readers that used to plug into this thing called a headphone jack back from the dinosaur days. Um, you know, Jack runs Square, Jack runs Twitter. Square is very, very profitable. Twitter is kind of a dead fish. So, you know, Jack said on Friday night, infl hyperinflation is going to change everything. It is happening. Hyperinflation is when the overall price increases happen so fast and furious, generally meaning 50% per month. So in excess of 50% per month. So what happens is people start putting their money into things that are not tied to a currency. Uh, so one of the big questions is when we're talking about crypto, a lot of people are saying, you know, how, how do I think Shiba is going to perform? I'll tell you, I actually own a pretty significant amount of Shiba. Let me see if I can get my Coinbase and I'll kind of show you. I think I've spent about two grand on Shiba and I'm sitting at, pretty significant amount okay so i'm about eight hundred dollars up on my shiba and you know that is actually very relevant in the hyperinflation world because these assets become worth more so you'll see that's the bottom of my my shiba pile it's a thousand five hundred five hundred i do have some shiba i've mined as well shiba's actually done really well as has solana so if we go back, they're kind of new and emerging platforms. Again, I want to see how much I've spent on here. This one's a little bit more, 2825 cents Solana. So what's really there? So, about a, so that's kind of flat, but that's because I've moved it and I've actually staked the Solana. And this is pretty recent Solana bought on Friday. But when we're looking at hyperinflation, it's going to change everything. Pandemic-related shortages combined with... A continuing supply of uh, supply chain snags will keep consumer prices up with inflation lasting longer than anticipated, probably going well into next year. Fed Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said on Friday, uh, the market is still up because, again, it's something called Tina. There is no alternative. If you're making money and you want to put it somewhere, you're not going to put it in real estate. Real estate's really, 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 really overpriced. And hell if you're going to put it at a bank because banks are paying essentially nothing. You know, if, if we go ahead and we compare M1 Finance. You know, if we look at M1 Finance, let me interest rate disclosure. This is one of the highest rates you'll get, which is a 1% rate. And they are actually, oh, that's their margin agreements. Let's see if we can figure out M1 Finance, M1 Spend, how it works. They're paying 1%, which is clinically insane nowadays uh, for 1% interest. Most banks out there are paying 0.1%. Here we go. So most banks out there on a checking account are paying, you know, essentially zero. So they're paying essentially zero. For a membership program with M1 Finance, they're paying 1%. So when we're looking at hyperinflation, you know, the economics and hyperinflation are used to describe situations where the prices of all goods and services rise uncontrollably over a defined period in time. Hyperinflation is extremely rapid inflation. Again, very smart finance guy, Jack, uh, Jack Dorsey, at Jack, uh, who runs both Twitter and Square, talking about this on Friday, which is uh, October 22nd. So October 22nd, you know. And that's why if you've ever gone to some countries like, say, Russia, where you've got the Russian ruble, I've just personally been there, so I'm talking from actual experience, things are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. You're spending $100,000 and you're like, okay, 
here's a hundred thousand dollars. You know, the world is actually an interesting place. You know, if you've noticed, if you if you go to fast food restaurants and you look around fast food restaurants, the dollar menu has pretty much gone away. The only time you'll even think about finding dollar items anymore is during like happy hours at different places that they've got in between lunch and dinner, uh, like the two to five time for Arby's as well as uh, Taco Bell as an example. But you know, if we're looking at causes of hyperinflation, so hyperinflation commonly occurs when there's a significant rise in the money supply that is not supported by economic growth. Again, we keep printing money. The increase in money supply is caused by the government printing and injecting more money into the domestic economy or to cover budget deficits. That's exactly what's going on. When more money is put into circulation, the real value of the currency decreases and prices rise now that is life it happens but this is when it happens super quick hyperinflation quickly devalues the local currency or in this case the world reserve currency of the dollar you know in comparison to other currency dips this situation will drive holders of domestic uh, currency to maxim to maximize their holdings and switch to more stable foreign currencies or crypto cryptos becoming a stable foreign currency even though it's property not a currency as far as the irs is right now in an attempt to avoid paying higher prices tomorrow due to hyperinflation, people start to hoard and invest in durable goods. If you've noticed the shelves empty, if you've noticed those things, so such as equipment, machines, jewelry, in situations of prolonged hyperinflation, individuals will begin to accumulate perishable goods. Food shortages. That's what we're going into. Jack Dorsey's just calling out a fact. You know, it causes a vicious cycle. As prices rise, people accumulate more goods and good in turn, creating more demand and further increasing prices. If hyperinflation continues unabated, it nearly always causes a major economic collapse. Therefore, why I've got a percentage of my portfolio bookmarked right there in things that go that will go green when the market goes red. Other than that, top one, DWAC, it did break 100, but it does not look like it's going to stay over 100. That one will be really interesting when we get volume in about five hours at 9 a.m. and then volume again in about five hours and 20 minutes at 9.30 a.m. So, you know, if we're looking at hyperinflation, Zimbabwe is a country that experienced significant hyperinflation in the past. The Zimbabwe, Zimbabwean dollar is no longer actively used as it was officially suspended by the government due to rampant hyperinflation a decade ago. Zimbabwe reached the second highest incidence of hyperinflation in the country. The country's inflation rate for November 2008 was a staggering, my God, 7 billion percent, a daily inflation of 98 percent. We're not going to have something like that, you know. But prices in Zimbabwe nearly doubled every day. Goods and services will cost twice as much the following day. But it's a vicious cycle, you know. And the Fed's job, Jerome Powell is the head of the Fed. The Fed's job is to actually maintain that. They want to dampen the trajectory and monetary policy, reduce the money supply in the economy. As there's a increase in money supply, those who tend to favor saving money more, it reduces spending and slows down the economy. That's what's going on. People are putting money into these stocks because Atina, there is no alternative. So hyperinflation is definitely something you want to watch out for that's going on. Now, speaking, kind of taking a pivot from hyperinflation, later, the, let, me, let me pivot out of hyperinflation.